I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will you join me in prayer, please? Supreme Architect of the universe, we invoke thy blessing at this time. May this meeting thus be conducted in peace and close in harmony. Amen. So moving. Well, good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the public business meeting of the county uh, commissioners on Thursday, February 6, 2014. Commissioners, are there any additions or deletions to our agenda? No, no sir. Gentlemen, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes of our January 16th, 2014 public business meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Brody, seconded by Commissioner Valentine. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Gentlemen, we've got three things on our action agenda this evening. Item number one is a resolution 14-3, the 2014 water uh, quality loan. Quantity loan. Quality. Quality. Mr. Bennett. Good evening. Good evening, sir. You can just call it MDE. That's a whole lot easier to say. MDE. Um, what you have in front of you tonight is authorization. Where's Jackie? Sam's? Yeah, Jackie yeah, Sam's know. is in here. Anyhow. Should, should we wait? Anyhow. Now, go, go ahead. But seriously, I, we do need to find out where she's at. She's a staple here. We'll send so. out a search party. She's important. So. Um, what you have in front of you is uh, a resolution seeking authorization to close two MDE loans, uh, total $1,190,500, uh, two sanitary loans, one of them is Bedford Road, Phase 3, Highland Estates. It's for $137,000. Uh, another piece of the Bedford Road one at Highland Estates is $875,000. It's actually loan forgiveness. So even though this says loan, as soon as we close on it, it essentially becomes grant. So that's that's pretty good for us. Um, and then the third piece of this one is Jennings Run Sanitary. It's a $178,000 loan. Uh, interest rate's going to be approximately 1.05 percent. We'll get the final at, at the time of closing in about a month. Um, the, the payments for both of these loans come from existing user rates and ad valorems. Um, it's a 20-year term. And we authorize this borrowing with bond bill 6-13 back in the fall. Okay. So we're just seeking your approval. Today. Okay. Any questions for Jason? No, sir. Let's nope. take advantage of this. So. Really good rate and really good deal in the loan forgiveness. So, yeah. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. Commissioners, I entertain a motion for passage of resolution 14-3. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there yep. a second? Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Valentine, seconded by Commissioner Brody. Um, Roll, uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. But stand right there. Item number two is a certificate of deposit account registry service agreement. What's this all about, Jason? So what this is all about is um, we're looking for a way to save some staff time. As you know, our office is down quite a few staff members. So we found what we think is an efficiency in our office with this CD agreement. So this CD agreement with uh, First United will allow us to automate a lot of our CD process. We can simply set an amount out there with them. They're, they'll assist us in managing it. Right now we have to, to bid CDs and it takes time looking for them. This one kind of does it for us. Um, along the way, the, the way their program works, it divides the CD up amongst an aggregate of banks nationwide so that we can keep our FDIC insurance. So if we exceed that right now, we have to go get extra collateral. So that also saves us time. So this is a no-cost thing to us, um, something we think saves us a lot of time. So we just we want get, to get the authorization for me to sign this and, and get it started. And we'll start it slow to see how it goes and, and build as we go. Mr. Rudd, you're fine with this? Yes. We're covered? Mm -hmm. Okay. Gentlemen, uh, any questions for Jason? No, sir. Okay. I'd like to entertain a motion to uh, accept the Certificate of Deposit Account Registry Service Agreement. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Brody, seconded by Commissioner Valentine. 
All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Gentlemen, item number three is resolution 14-4, dis uh, disaster recovery assistance. And I understand that Mr. Nedved from the Economic and Community Development Representative has a short, yes, brief, short. Well, I can be real quick. Uh, Not real quick. <laughs> okay. Just brief. Just brief. Uh, at the end of January, we... Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of January, we, we um, both the county and the city of Frostburg made applications for disaster recovery assistance. Uh, the city of Frostburg did it for two generators, one for their water treatment plant and one for their savage pumping, pumping station. station. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also put an application in for uh, to buy houses in the floodplain, you know, do some flood buyouts. Uh, one of the requirements for the, this application is that we actually get the application authorized by the, the Board of Commissioners. Uh, we actually were given a little extra time. Usually they require the resolution to go in with the application, but since the application had to be done in such a hurry, they actually gave us a a little extra time to get the resolution in but the resolution is part of the application process even though we've already done the applications okay okay i'm just asking for your vote to authorize the resolution to allow us to make the application gentlemen i'd like to move uh, that we accept resolution 14-4 the disaster recovery assistance is there a second second has been moved by Commissioner McKay, seconded by Commissioner Valentine. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Commissioner. Got a question, David. Mm -hmm. um, recovery assistance. Is there anything out there for preventative? What I mean by that is, um, say, you know, we had some cold weather shelters that were created, and we found out that one of our shelters if they lost power, they couldn't yeah. provide power for the shelter. So is there anything out there that we can do some preventative? This, this grant would have, could be, uh, in fact, a big portion of it is the fact to prevent uh, oncoming. Prevent more so yeah, than recovery. Yeah, more so than recovery, especially in counties that weren't hit as hard by, in this case, like Hurricane Sandy. The problem gets to be in that case, um, there's a lot of people asking for generators because that's an obvious need. So it has to, we have to really, for lack of a better phrase, the story has to be a strong one. And um, what they're really looking for is, like in the case of Frostburg, they, you lost power and um, the, the generators that were there didn't, didn't really, weren't really up to snuff. It's, they're, they're old in the case of Frostburg, or that you did, you did lose power and you didn't have any generators, and you end up having to move people from one shelter to another. Um, that's part of our problem. Otherwise, if we had had a stronger story, I would have applied for that for, for the cold weather shelter. Well, we'll give you okay. a homework assignment. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 money for something like that. Yeah, yeah. we want you to uh, talk with Dan Williams. Um, um, he's even though he doesn't, he's, he's not elected mayor of Mount Savage. Yes, he's the um, unofficial mayor. But he's the unofficial representative. Um, but please get with him okay. um, about the fire hall. And they do not have a generator there, but yet we had used that as a cold weather yes. shelter. And I think we can create a, a good enough story for a need okay. there, well, it, especially because it's not a municipality. I mean, it, it's, okay. it's not, it's not. Um, it's heads having to come to the, the county for these type of things, so that might be an option there. And possibly one place to look, the state's got a program right now that they have grants for any service station in the state of Maryland. Yeah. Because and whenever Sandy hit, nobody could buy gas, and they yeah. said that was a dangerous situation. So maybe we could talk them in through that program, okay, you know, we're housing these people, right. and yet if the power goes off, we cannot house them in this emergency shelter. Yeah, so, I I think it's one of these things when the, when down the road, if if money more money becomes available, then we're going to be able to do more. Um, I, I, part of the problem is a lot of this money is going to just one county. It's going to Somerset County in the state, 
um, and the rest of the counties are all competing for what's left and so that's the hard part is okay so what I understand it is that yeah. you'll take care of this for us. yes I will we'll okay, thank, you very much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you commissioner thank you sir he was trying to be brief though I know he was it's all right I have a tendency to run my mouth <clears throat> anyhow Mr. Eberly, what do we have on our consent agenda today, sir? Uh, commissioners, on our brief <coughs> consent agenda for this afternoon, we have uh, <coughs> items related to board appointments for uh, the Emergency Services Board and the Housing Authority Board. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Eberly? Gentlemen, I'd like to entertain a motion to accept our consent agenda. So moved. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Brody. Seconded by Commissioner Valentine. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. What is on your desk today? Mr. Commissioners, uh, we have this afternoon two pieces of correspondence that uh, uh, the entities are desiring all three of your signatures on. And uh, the first one is to the Honorable Benjamin Cardin, um, our United States Senator, and it relates to the Cumberland Regional Airport in the National Road Auto Sports um, interest at the airport. Dear Senator Cardin, we, the Board of Commissioners of Allegheny County, wish to take this opportunity to support the Potomac <coughs> Highland Airport Authority as they seek your assistance in obtaining clarification from the Federal Aviation Administration and its position relative to future auto sport activities at the Greater Cumberland Regional Airport. The FFA has ruled that the continuation of auto sport events at the airport would contradict conditions of federal grants needed to support their capital improvement program. We very much appreciate the assistance provided by Robin Summerfield of your office to assist the PHAA and our community in obtaining this clarification. Thank you in advance for your time and thoughtful consideration on this matter. Gentlemen, any questions? Are we in consensus to uh, sign this letter of support? No? question. Okay. Have to be in blue. Why don't you go ahead and read what we have next, sir. Uh, commissioners, a, um, a letter has been prepared um, by uh, staff of uh, the Garrett County Commissioner's Office uh, asking for a, um, a co-signatories here for <laughs> both of our communities related to Senate Bill 360 which relates to natural gas, hydraulic fracturing, and the prohibition of those activities. Um, this letter is uh, dated February the 4th, 2014. It's addressed to the Honorable Joan Carter Conway, who is the chair of the Senate Education, Health, and Environmental Affairs Committee. Uh, dear Chairman Conway, we the undersigned oppose Senate Bill 360, natural gas, hydraulic fracturing prohibition. Advancing this proposed bill is premature and undermines the due diligence of the governor's Marcellus Shale Committee. With an executive order, Governor, governor Martin O'Malley created a comprehensive timeline to study the impacts of natural gas extraction. His executive order should be honored and the process for review that the governor has authorized should remain intact. Responsible, responsible natural resource development has always contributed greatly to the regional economy and to the state economy, and we understand the need for responsible development that balance, balances all interests. Millions of millions of dollars are generated by local firms traveling out of Maryland to service the gas industry. This bill will have a negative impact on small businesses who are struggling, engaged in providing services rel related to hydraulic fracturing and the development of natural gas resources. Your, your leadership on this important matter will enable Allegheny and Garrett counties, along with the state of Maryland, to benefit financially both short and long term and assist our region and nation in a meaningful step towards energy self-sufficiency. Commissioners, we have all three county commissioners from Garrett County who have signed this letter. Okay. Gentlemen, any questions, comments? Uh, only I have heard that uh, <clears throat> Senator Conway is not in favor of this bill. And when a committee chair is not in favor of the bill, it'll probably have a short life. But I, I think it's extremely important we go on record with the letter. Again, commissioners, this is related to Senate Bill 360, uh, sponsored by Senators Zirkin, Montgomery, Brochin, Kelly, Ramirez, and Raskin. Are any of those um, senators from Western Maryland? I don't believe so, no. sir. No. So 
once again, we have people downstate telling what we have to do in Western Maryland. Oh, well, That's our natural resources. Everyone is so, uh, such a quick hurry to put a moratorium on everything. Why did someone don't put something in to put a moratorium on taxes in this great state of Maryland? There's an idea. <laughs> There's an idea. Are we in consensus? We are, sir. <clears throat> Anything else on your desk, sir? That's it, commissioners. Mr. Rudd, anything from the Department of County Attorney? Not really. Mr. Nedved used all my time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to try to work on that. <laughs> commissioners, are there any comments, statements? Mm -hmm. Commissioner Brown. Yes, sir. First thing I'd like to do this evening is thank our roads department for the job well done mm. in these last couple of weeks because it has sure been a trying time. And one thing I'd like to get out to the citizens, uh, because I was actually up in Frostburg today uh, speaking a little bit with their roads department, is everyone needs to know, and I don't know how to make this any simpler, their driveways connect to our roads, not the other way around because I actually was told today by one of their supervisors they had a guy actually turn the snowblower loose on them as they was passing by with their window down with the plow guy watching the corner of the plow so they didn't hit his mailbox. And I think that is the most disrespectful thing that anybody can do. Mm -hmm. Our roads, the snow has to go somewhere, but I think that our guys has done an exceptionally great job here in the last couple of weeks. Nextly, and I'll keep this one short too, thank you for signing that letter. Uh, about, I guess about five weeks ago, I was called one night at the house and I was told that there was going to be, it was on a Monday night, that there was going to be a letter to, in, to the editor in the paper the next day from the motocross about the PHAA. And I said, I can't imagine why. We've done everything we're supposed to have done. We're going to do what we can do. So I was shocked Tuesday when I read that letter. I got this uh, phone call Monday night from the same person that was at a board meeting the other night and said that the motocross strictly is going to come out against me and a board member over there. Over, We're getting ready to put a project out for bids and they was laying a trap. Let them come. The media is sitting right here. I have had enough. You know, Our board members serve over there. They don't get paid for nothing. I don't need that stuff as a county commissioner. If they want to investigate, do whatever they like to do because it ends right here tonight. That airport is moving forward. I am not going to hinge $6,000 worth of growth on a $58 million project, period. So it's done. I will no longer, as chairman of the airport commission, will not entertain any more nothing until something comes back from Ben Cardin, sir. And that, with that being said, that is the last time I will speak on that publicly. Perfect. Okay. Commissioner Valentine. Okay. Uh, on the Marcella Shale, uh, we, our commission has a meeting on Monday. It's going to be sort of difficult. The meeting runs from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. And there's going to be a group of the commissioners at the uh, DNR building in Annapolis and another group in Oakland. And this is going to be a six-hour phone call meeting. And we all know how well that works. Uh, probably the best thing about this meeting, yeah, since day one, I've been trying to get the study commission to look at, at uh, what they call dry fracking. One of the biggest concerns about fracking is you take a lot of good, clean, pure water, a couple million gallons, pump it down the well and it comes back as contaminated water, then you have to haul the water, you have to treat the water. Uh, so there's been a lot of concern about truck traffic, water availability, cleaning the water, and yet there's dry fracking methods out there. Tried to get them to look at the uh, CO fracking that we could have captured the CO from um, AF Warrior Run, which would lower their tax bill, and they wouldn't listen to it. Uh, there's one using um, propane gas, they wouldn't listen to that. But at Pace, I had a conversation with a gentleman that represents ATK, and ATK have com has come up with a method for dry fracking. They actually will create a small explosive device, for whatever size the needs are for the amount of shale they want to crack. 
gets lowered into the into the well with a tether taken to the exact point where they want to set it off, set off a small explosive charge. They pull the canister back up out. The fracking is done. The only equipment needed on site is a crane and a pickup truck. Uh, so after two different conversations with the heads of our commission, that representative from ATK will have time to address the commission. He'll be in Annapolis. Of course, people will have to listen to it on the phone up in, in Oakland. But maybe we're starting to, to get them to listen to, to some reason. Um, other than that, Mike and I have been spending a lot of time down in Annapolis. Um, I sit on the legislative committee for, for MACO, and I'm the co-chair for uh, MACO's education subcommittee. And this week we looked at a couple bills that I think will have a um, local impact. One is called is House Bill 484, Higher Education Community Colleges Tuition Reduction, to where they actually want to pass a bill that community colleges would reduce their tuition charge for people who are unemployed. And that caused a lot of problems <laughs> with MACO because there's another bill where they are cutting the funding that they're sending to community colleges. The state, so the state is cutting funding to community colleges and then asking the community colleges to lower their tuition. Uh, the only bright spot for Allegheny County uh, is that quite a few of these unemployed people would probably uh, be covered by the scholarship fund that we have set up. So, you know, we probably don't have to ask ACM to, uh, to cut their, their tuitions for these uh, gentlemen. Uh, there's another one where there's actually a bill to increase funding to all local libraries. And we definitely need that in this county. In fact, across the state, the libraries have been bleeding for quite a while. And probably one of the most disturbing ones out there, and uh, Mako didn't take it real well, it's called a warrant intercept program, that if you have got a warrant, an outstanding warrant, uh, the government will, will take your income tax returns. Now the problem with that is, if it's a warrant, it means you haven't even gone to trial. You haven't been convicted of anything. Yeah, you could have a warrant out for you if you're going down the road and one of these speed cameras says that they saw you speeding someplace. Then there's a warrant put out for you. And if there's a warrant, they can claim your income tax returns. <coughs> and that to me, you know, you're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty, even in the state of Maryland. And to me, you, they should not have the right to, to claim somebody's funds because once the IRS gets it, I hate to think what it would take to get it back. I mean, you would never get it back in one chunk. It'd probably take you 10 years to get this year's uh, income tax returns back. So um, there was a lot of discussion on that, and uh, I, hopefully that's not going to happen. Okay. <clears throat> one of the other bills that came up, um, this um, we were in support of and was successful in getting MAKO to support with amendments um, is Senate Bill 605, the property tax credit for upper, story, upper stories of commercial structures and rehabilitation. Um, that is a, a bill that has been presented by Senator Edwards, and that is for the city of Cumberland as well as the city of Frostburg. And so we were successful to get um, MAKO to support that. And um, the only amendment had to do with that's basically um, authorizing up to 50% of a tax um, uh, uh, a tax rebate or a tax credit, I'm sorry, tax credit. And the, the amendment had to do with allowing the counties to determine if maybe they only wanted to do 25% or they wanted to do 30%. Um, at the end of the day, it was allowing the decisions to be made locally instead of being made in Baltimore. So it was a good thing. It was a good thing to help the city of Cumberland as well as um, the city of Frostburg. And this is a program the city of Cumberland used probably, what, about 12, 13 years ago. That's how they got so much upper story development down there at that time. And it went with the uh, 
I think it went through people in the arts. If they were going to sell their art on first floor and put their studios on second floor, live third floor, whatever, they got they got a grant from the state to help with this. And that's it's a problem in all municipalities. You know, people just aren't using three and four story stores anymore. Well, it has to do with uh, to rehabilitate those type of structures. You're having to comply to ADA compliant sprinklers, all those different things that makes it prohibitive for a developer to come in and say, I can actually rehab that building, make money, and help the town. So I felt real good that we were able to get that to go through. So, okay. Do we have anybody that's signed up? You want me to ask you again? <laughs> no? Okay. Do you want to speak? Yeah, no? You sure? Be careful. Dave Everly doesn't like it when you and I speak. I know. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> What's next on the agenda? <laughs> it looks like it says here, a reminder of any upcoming meetings. Remind everyone that our next public business meeting will be Thursday, February 13th, 2014, 5 o'clock, right here in room 100. And an important is uh, <clears throat> to let everyone see the news release pertaining to the fiscal year 2015 budget schedule. Commissioners, if there's nothing else on your desk, I'd like to thank everyone for participating in their government, and we hope you have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you.